In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a game pass in Roblox Studio. I'm gonna be showing you how to create a game pass that lets you jump twice as high and also gives you some cool flames. But if you have a specific request for game pass, just let me know down below and I'll be sure to make it. However, what I'm gonna cover in this video is necessary for all game passes. So be sure to watch to the end. As always, I would appreciate it if you can like the video because it helps me out a lot. And with that, let's get into it. The first thing that you need to do is open up Roblox Studio, of course, go to the game that you want to add a game pass to, go to the home tab, click on game settings, click publish, and give your place a name. I named this game pass tutorial. Go on and click publish again. And also make sure for permissions, you have the, this set to public if you want people to actually be able to play your game. After you've done that, go to the create tab, find your place or your experience that you want to add a game pass to, or maybe an experience pass. Uh, that's a good question right there. If it's experience pass or game pass now, click this button right here, the settings, and go down to create a pass. Give your pass a, a name and a description. Choose a file for the game pass image, and then click preview. I'm gonna go ahead and verify the upload. It'll probably take some time due to image moderation for your image to appear here, but go ahead and click the settings right here, go to configure, and I actually need to change the name of this because it changed when I uploaded the image. Uh, that's why I should have paid attention on the verify upload spot. So I'll name this cool pass, then I'll save that. And I'm also gonna go to sales and I'll enable it for sale. As you can see, there's the price right here. So you can set the price. Roblox takes 30% as a tax. So if you set it to one Robux, you actually get nothing uh, because they round down. So you could set this to 10 Robux and then you would get seven Robux every time this was sold and Roblox would take three Robux. So go ahead and set the price to whatever you want. Make sure that you understand that you won't get the full amount because Roblox Roblox will take their cut, click save. And after this, look up in the top and you should see a number, this ID, copy that ID. And then let's go to Roblox Studio because that's important for the script. If you're on this page, then you'll see it up here again, but it's the numbers after Game Pass right here and then the name of the Game Pass. So right there, just copy and paste that. I'm going to show you how to prompt the player to purchase the Game Pass in multiple ways. I'll show you how to do it with the proximity prompt with the touched event and then also the click detector or the click mouse click event. Also, I'll show you how to do it with a screen GUI. So the first thing that we're gonna do is go to starter GUI, insert a screen GUI, inside of the screen GUI, insert a text button. Inside of the text button, we will insert a local script. And now this is where we will paste the number that we just copied. So paste that in here. This is the uh, game pass ID. So type in local game pass ID equals and this is going to be very important for all of the scripts. First thing that we need to do is get the marketplace service because this is used to actually buy the game pass. So type in local marketplace service equals game colon get service then marketplace service. And then next we'll get the player service as well. So type in local players equals game colon get service and the player's service. We have the game pass ID, and then next we'll get the button. So like local button equals script.parent. Next, what we're going to do is connect to the mouse button one click event. So type in mouse button one click, connect, and function. And in here, I will actually make a separate function just to make it a little more clear. We'll call this prompt purchase. So we're going to create a function. Local function equals prompt purchase and in here we're going to actually write the code that will prompt the purchase to the user so the first thing that we need to do is get the local player so we'll type in local player equals players dot local player and then after that we'll type in local has pass equals false and we're going to use a p call in order to check to see if the player actually has a pass. So we'll type in local success comma message equals pico, then a function, and then this function will set has pass equal to whatever marketplace service returns for this user owns game pass async function. This function right here will take the player's user ID. So we'll type in player dot user ID and then the game pass ID, so game pass ID. And what this function will do is it will make a network call with the player's user ID and the game pass ID 
and it will return true if the player has a pass and false otherwise. Because this is a network call, we need to use pcall because it could fail and we want to fail gracefully. So if this does fail, then success will be false. And if it's successful, then success will be true. That doesn't mean the player will necessarily have the pass or not. It just means that this worked in the first place. And if it does fail, then message will be the failure message. So down here, we'll type in if not success, then that means the call to use your own games past async did not work. Uh, so we can warn, you know, error while checking um, if player had game pass, you could add a more clear error right there, error message if you want. And then we're just gonna return because this didn't work out. And otherwise, we're going to do this. So if there was, was success and we were able to find out if the player has a game pass or not, right here, if has pass, uh, because if the player does have the pass, then we want to say button.text equals already owned or something like that. This is where you would want to tell the player that they already have the game pass. So what they're doing doesn't matter. Maybe you just don't want the, the button to show up in the first place. That would also make sense. Uh, but going back to this local script, you can do whatever you want here uh, in order to tell the player that they already have the game pass. So there's no need to purchase it. And then otherwise, if they do have the, or do not have the game pass, then we can prompt the player to purchase it. So type in marketplace service colon prompt purchase or prompt game pass purchase rather and then we'll give it the player it takes the player that will be trying to purchase the game pass and then the game pass id in question so this again will prompt this player to purchase this game pass so if you have other game passes you can decide which one to prompt here but it'll be this game pass right here which is the from the id that we copied before now going back to this button i'll we'll probably want to change the text so i'll go down to the text and i'll change the text just to say purchase game pass now if i play the game and i click this button you see it says already owned and that's because I created the game pass. So I obviously already own it. Now you can also go to test and click start to test it with a local server. And uh, this will simulate it as if you don't own the game pass already. And I click this, you'll see I'm prompted, but it says third party atom sales have been disabled for this place. Your account has not been charged. Now this is something that's kind of weird. I don't know if there's any other better way to get around this, but I'll just say, okay, I'll pause the game or stop it. And then for testing your game, what you can do, but I would strongly discourage you from doing this. Uh, just make sure the code looks right in the first place. But if you're going to test it, make sure you disable this afterward if you go to security and go to allow third party sales then you can test it however i strongly discourage you from doing this because there's a risk that you accidentally buy someone else's game pass or product so just be very careful if you do this that you remember to deselect this however in roblox studio you won't have to worry about it because it won't charge you for anything in the first place. So there's not a risk while you're playing in studio, but if you actually publish a game and then play your game, you may accidentally encounter other people's products. So I'll save that. I'll go back to the test and start. And I started a local server. I'll click on purchase game pass. And as you can see, I'm prompted to buy the product cool pass for 10 Robux. And it does say this is a test purchase. Your account will not be charged. So again, enabling those third-party purchases in Roblox Studio is no risk. However, there is a risk if you were to actually publish your game with that still enabled, and then people could buy third-party products that aren't yours. So I'll click buy now. It says purchasing. It says this was a test purchase and it was successful. I'll click OK. And as you can see, nothing happens because we need to write the code to do that. In order to give the player the benefits of buying the game pass, what you want to do is go to server script service, click the plus, insert a script, and go to the script that we just created before, copy the first three lines, paste them into here, and we're going to create two functions and connect to two different events. We'll create a function called local function give game pass, and this will take the player. And then we'll also create a function called on player added. So type in on player added, and then this will automatically receive the player. And then at the bottom, we're going to connect to two functions. As I said before, the marketplace service has a function called prompt game pass purchase finished. So 
type in all of that, it's quite a bit. Prompt game pass purchase finished, connect to that. This function will automatically receive the player, the pass ID, and then the Boolean was purchased. So I'll get into more detail on that in just a second. Then at the bottom, we're going to connect to the players added event. So players dot player added connect, and then we'll give it this on player added function. So what we're gonna do here is whenever a player joins a game, we'll check to see if they have the game pass and give them the abilities that come with it. Otherwise, uh, whenever a player attempts to purchase it, then we will either give it to them if they did purchase it, otherwise we won't do anything. So we'll go back to the local script again, and let's go ahead and just copy all of this code, and then paste it into the on player added event right here, or function rather. At the top, we're going to also create a has pass has pass variable, if I can type this out correctly, set it to false, and we will change a bit down here. I'll actually just go ahead and delete that for now. But um, so this is the same stuff as before. If they have the pass, uh, this will be true. Otherwise, it'll be false. It might fail. So if it fails, then we just want to stop right there. Don't do anything else. Then at the bottom, check to see if they have the pass. So if has pass, then, so this is just going to say if the player has a pass, then what we want to do is give them the game pass. So we'll type in give game pass player. This could probably be better named give game pass um, perks maybe. That might be more accurate because we're not really giving them the game pass, give game pass perks right there. And down here, we'll give them whatever benefits to having the game pass there are. So in this case, what we could do is go ahead and say if player dot character, then and then we'll type in local humanoid equals player dot character and then wait for child humanoid and we'll make sure that the humanoid is loaded and then it will set the humanoid dot jump height to two times what the original value is so that's the asterisk equals two this will multiply it by two. If the jump height before is 7.2, afterward, this will be 14.4. That's just giving the player a jump height of double what it originally was. We'll also create the flame, local flame equals instance dot new, and then fire. We'll parent that flame. So we'll type in flame dot parent equals player. That's a I think player dot character and then wait for child, and then we'll type in humanoid root part. So this will give the player the ability to jump twice as high as other players, and it will also give them a flame and their humanoid root part. However, this will only occur if the player already exists. What we want to do is also down here, connect to the uh, character added event. So player dot character added connect, function, the character uh, before type in just with one A, like the normal spelling, and we can actually just copy and paste this in again. So what this will do is the same as before, and you can change this out to whatever, you know, benefits or perks you want the game pass to give the player. But in this case, we're giving them the ability to jump twice as high as other players and also have that cool fire. And what this does is whenever the player responds, it will give them those abilities again. If you don't do this part down here, then if the player or to respawn, then they would not have these abilities any longer. On the other hand, the part at the top will only execute if the player is already loaded, uh, because if the player is loaded and you only had this, then the player wouldn't start off with the abilities. So you want the player to immediately get the perks of having the game pass and also continue to have them when they respawn. As you can see now, when I join the game, I'm on fire and if I jump, I jump twice as high as I could before. In order to detect when a player purchases a game pass while they're in game, you need to connect to the prompt game pass purchase finished event. This event will fire when a player either purchases or attempts to purchase a game pass. So that'll be this was purchased. You'll be wanting to look at this was purchased variable right here will be true if the player already owns the game pass or if they just purchased it, or it will be false if they don't own the game pass. That event will be fired 
required whenever a player gets the screen and they click cancel or buy now. If they click cancel, then has purchased will be false. If they click buy now and the purchase is successful, then the has purchased will be true. So go back here, it actually says was purchased. I think I said has purchased, but if was purchased is true, then we want to actually give the player the game pass perks. So we'll type in give game pass perks player. But the problem with this is that this will always give the game pass perks to a player. So if they actually receive the purchase prompt multiple times, even though they already own the game pass, the, this function will execute multiple times. So then if they respawn, you know, every time they respawn and they've tried to purchase this, then instead of having their jump height multiplied by two, it'll be multiplied by two twice over or three times over, however many times they've been uh, prompting or been prompted with the game pass purchase right here. So what we can do to avoid this is up here, if in the has pass, we can set the attribute player, colon set attribute, and then we'll set an attribute called game pass fire to true. And if you want to check out my video on attributes, if you don't know attributes, be sure to do that. But this will just create an attribute for a player that has the game pass and set it to true. Then down here, we want to set this to true again. And we'll instead of just checking to see if it was purchased, because this will be true if they already owned it and were prompted to purchase the game pass, we want to check to see if they actually don't own it already. So in here, we'll do if it was purchased and player colon get attribute. And then in here, we'll get the attribute game pass fire. So if the player has the game pass already, then this would be true. So instead of this, we want to do not. So this will just make sure the player doesn't already own the game pass and they just purchased the game pass. We will give them the game pass perks and then we'll set the game pass fire attribute to true. That'll just prevent excessive calls to give game pass perks. Now you can also check the pass ID if you have multiple game passes, that way you can call the correct function. Instead of, you know, giving the game pass perks, you could have a give game pass perks two or three or four. Uh, obviously you probably want to give more descriptive names than one, two, three, four. Maybe it could be give game pass or run speed or something like that, but uh, basically, this is all you need to do to actually give the perks once they purchase the game pass. If you want to be able to prompt a player to purchase a game pass with the proximity prompt, with the touched event, or with the click detector, then be sure to check out my video on all three of those, but I'll also briefly show you the code right now. So this is generally what the code will look like. I have the touch part and I have the touch event and I'm just prompting the purchase just as we did in the other scripts. At the proximity prompt, I'm connecting to the triggered event and again, prompting the purchase. I have the click detector and the clicked mouse click event. Then I'm prompting the purchase again. So this is fairly simple. It's just as we did before, but instead of having the mouse click with the text button, we have the touch event, we have the triggered event, and we have the mouse click event. Once you're done with testing, don't forget to go back to the settings, go to security, disallow third-party sales, and save the change. As with any game, if you want to save your changes, click on file, and then publish to Roblox to publish your changes. Otherwise, you won't see any changes if you save them locally with something like Control S or with File Save to File. If you have questions, be sure to comment them below, but make sure you add Velvet to your comment that way I know you watched the full video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video if it helped you out. Subscribe for more in the future and comment any questions below.